Hey everyone, it's pretty late at night here. Um, the kids are in bed and my husband's in bed asleep. And I've just been enjoying the peace and quiet and thinking about some things. I got some news at work that wasn't super thrilling. So I can choose to worry about it and fret and think of worst case scenarios in my mind. Um, but I'm choosing to pray and ask God for direction, knowing that it's not taking him by surprise. He knows what's going to happen and it's all in his hands. And then I started thinking about the scripture in Psalm 4610 where it says be still and know that I am God I will be exalted uh, let me see how it says it exactly I will be exalted among the heathen I will be exalted in the earth but the part that I really want to focus on for this video is be still and know that I am God there's just such peace and comfort in that scripture. There's, it's sweet. It's such a sweet message that we can just sit at the feet of our Savior and we can just be still. We can go before our Heavenly Father and we can just know that He is God. And I just, I take such peace in knowing that. It reminds me of when Jesus calmed the stormy winds. And that's found in Mark. So I think we should flip over to that in the Bible and read some of it together. It just, it's such a sweet display of God's power that even the wind has to obey him. I have my Bible here, so if you see me looking down, I'm just going to read a little bit. It's in Mark chapter 4, and I read from the King James Version, but you can follow along with whatever version that you have. And he, which is Jesus, began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. Then verse um, 35. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? There is so much to take out of the story. I mean, I just I get so excited about it. Just imagine that you're on a ship in the sea. And the wind starts picking up and maybe it's blowing your hair a little bit and 
Maybe it's even blowing some loose papers or your flag or whatever and, and you notice that the wind is getting stronger. And then maybe it's just almost taking your breath. It's so strong, it's, it's just coming on so fast and now your boat is filling up with water and you you start to freak out and, and you start thinking we're gonna die <laughs> and there are times in our lives that we are in that spiritual storm and the bills pile up or the doctor's diagnosis pile up um you know people turn against you <laughs> that you thought would always be there you know um Sickness comes, maybe um, something happens and financially you are strained beyond what you can imagine and you just don't know how to deal with it and at first you notice something's wrong and then it just feels like it's just not stopping and you just feel like the storm is surrounding you and you feel like your your vessel is just so filling up with water like you're just going under and you just don't know what to do maybe you'll be like those men that went to get Jesus and they were they said master don't you care that we perish have you ever prayed that? Don't you care, Lord, about all this stuff? Don't you see what's going on? Like, why is this happening? Why is this all happening at one time? Don't you care about me? Don't you care if I perish? And Jesus responds with, Why do you have no faith? And I think he would say that to us too. You know? Jesus had done so many miracles and he he just shared so much of himself his love and forgiveness and healing and to open up the eyes of the blind and make the lame walk and raise the dead and yet when it comes down to it being about them and their mortality, they panic and ask, don't you even care if we die? You're asleep. He slept because he was at peace. He does care about us. He doesn't want us to perish. John 3.16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a promise. He does care about us. He cares about our safety. He cares about our future. He cares about our eternity. He cares about us. And the things that matter to you, they do matter to God. I just want to encourage you to not give up on your faith, to remember, to remind yourself of all the things that he's brought you through, of all of the things that he did for you, of all the times that he healed your body, of all the times that he came through for you financially, for all the times that you just didn't know how it was going to work out and then somehow by God's power it just did. God is more than enough. His power is more than enough. He is victorious over all. The Bible says that all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. We don't have to be afraid. No matter what comes against us, as long as God is with us and in us, and we serve him and love him, he will fight for us. And all we have to do is be still and know that he is God. I hope something I've said has been strength for your journey and light for your way. God bless you.